Hey, will you switch with me really quick? Yeah, sure. I gotta make people think I'm important. How's it going, guys? I'm Josh. I'm here with two people that make things. I can't call you a photographer. Is that what you wanted me to say? I'm just saying I'm an iPhoneographer, but I mainly do video. But a lot of the concepts that we're talking about today applies to both. And what's your name again? Sarah Dietschy. Tyler. Tyler you? Gustin. <laughs> I am a photographer. It's kind of all I do, weirdly enough. And today I'm launching my first series where I talk about composition. And this is not an easy concept in photography. This is massive. It's all encompassing. So we're going to take it one step at a time. And today's focus is going to be the rule of thirds. Dun, dun, dun. I know this is daunting. We're going to do a couple things. First, we're going to talk about what the rule of thirds is and why there's so much hype about it. Followed by, we've all brought in a few of our rule of thirds shots and we're going to discuss them because rule of thirds is sort of an abstract concept and it's much easier to understand once you actually see how it's implemented. And finally, we're gonna go out shooting and we're gonna practice getting the rule of thirds in action. And that's today's video. So first of all, what is the rule of thirds? I just think about the grid that pops up yeah. when you open up your phone and the iPhone. Those lines are there for a reason. So it's basically lining up the subject or the main part of your picture for it to make sense in the three segments. When a photographer is implementing the rule of thirds, they're tending to off-center their object. The one other thing is I think about balance and order. Sometimes the subject should be in the center and sometimes you have multiple things and you can put one on one third, one on the other third, and it keeps the photo well balanced. It keeps your eye guided throughout the image. And it's not just limited to one or two subjects. It could be multiple things. For portraiture, you want to have the eyes line up with the top two intersection points of the rule of thirds. Did you yep. guys know that? Yep. Oftentimes, this sort of thing happens naturally. We could go on and on forever about the theoretical aspects behind rule of thirds. What I think will be much easier is we've all brought in our shots, and we're going to talk about why they work with the rule of thirds. Let's start. Tyler. Now, you guys are just really putting the pressure on me. Yep. Just because I'm a professional? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Check out this picker, guys. The big thing that's applied here in terms of rule of thirds is that your eye is being pushed to Freedom Tower. This is well, an iPhone photo. Yeah, this is taken on an iPhone. One of my sort of like staples of shooting is that I'll shoot down avenues or streets. Mm -hmm. Usually my goal is to have something at the end of that avenue, mm -hmm. like a finish line. The rule of thirds doesn't have to be this spot on thing where it's like no. you are on the precise third yeah. of the photo. I'm gonna show one now. This is a portrait I took of my brother and it's a little more straightforward. So he is aligned with the right third of the photo. When you're doing close-ups, you worry about the eyes. When you're doing further away, it's more about the body. And you also have a really sharp line of the shadow just to perfectly align that rule of third right there. What you got, Sarah? This is another New York City pick and there's so much going on in the picture, but your eyes still go to the Freedom Tower just mm -hmm. because it's kind of on that line. This might be an example of something that's not perfectly on that rule of thirds, but it still brings your eye to like Absolutely. the subject of the picture. Yeah, it hits on that right rule of yeah. third and it's perfectly balanced too with this leftward building. Mm -hmm. We all three clearly know the rule of thirds. Uh, let's do a few more images. This is a good example of kind of how to center a subject mm -hmm. in a frame while using rule of thirds regardless of what else is in the picture, it's just about offsetting your image. Yeah, right? so, and again, a little bit off-center, but yeah. it, it works. It's very simple once you start to get the hang of it. So sometimes the rule of thirds is just about having one object or item or person along one line. Sometimes you can have things along each and every line. So this image this is a street photo I took in Brooklyn. Yeah, and dope. Thanks, man. Much, much appreciated. So having one in each can be really cool. Basically, you don't have to just follow the rule of thirds in one way. Same for all of these compositional elements is the more you hit on, the stronger an image is. So like he had the framing with the Freedom Tower. This is the framing of the guy in the doorway. The more you can combine, it's sort of like a collect them all sort of thing, becomes that much more compelling. You have three things happening in the sense that you have the oh. three different textures happening. Yeah. Better than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. This is an example where you think the people are the subject of the rule of thirds, but in this picture, it's the actual structure. I would say another really big thing is with landscape photography, having the either top third or the bottom third being where the horizon line is. And this is the perfect example of the bottom third being the horizon line. Mm -hmm. So this is a Tuscan countryside oh, sunrise. <laughs> just a guy that goes to cool places sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, all right, we have more action going down in the bottom uh, foreground area and the sky is kind of eh. So we're gonna go two thirds land, one third sky. And that's basic rule of thirds. This is actually taken in Greece. 
this is a very literal rule of thirds picture where the ship is obviously the focus. Crazy, I could only take my iPhone to this. You had to jump into the water to get this picture to like climb up the mountain. So yeah, it's a very literal picture where the boat is like right in the center of that left third line. It's a very complicated picture and that's when you kind of need to lean on rules a little bit more just so it makes sense to a person's eye from the get-go. Oh wow, we gotta see that yeah, show. Like oh one. dang! Tell me about it. Yeah, so wow. fun fact, this is my most successful print. So this is Central Park Reservoir. Another fun yeah, fact, this is exactly <laughs> on the third line. Also fun fact, I took this on my first date with my girlfriend. That's the test right there. If she can wait for 20 minutes while you do your garbage, Oh, taken on this your is phone. on my phone. This is actually on a six. I'm gonna throw this away. Guys, um, if you have an iPhone, yeah, you can be a photographer. Exactly. But not too good, because then I don't have a job. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and one last little image I want to show is this photo I took of my friend taking a photo. And this is one of those things where you can kind of force the rule of thirds. So I had a grassy field and a minivan, and it wasn't super interesting, so I got super low and far out and zoomed in. I'm gonna transition this now into, what's all this hype about it? I think the reason why the rule of thirds is so popular and awesome is because the eye can naturally see two different types of photos. We can break things down into halves and see things that are perfectly centered, and we can do thirds. And anything more is too much for us. So it's one of those natural patterns you detect that's just naturally pretty gratifying. No, I mean, you're right. I think that it's a good way to make sure you don't overclutter an image. And in videos, you'll notice classic interview shots, they're never centered right in the middle. Typically, when someone is talking to someone off screen, but you're filming them on video, you want that space. If Tyler was being shot for an interview, and he was looking that way, that's awkward because there's like no space here. So you want to follow the rule of thirds in that case where I would be like sitting right here, talking to a person off camera here, and like have all this space. That's more natural. That makes sense to your eye. One really cool thing about doing the rule of thirds and understanding it is now being able to break it really productively. So having a really perfectly centered shot, there is a time and place for it. I took this in Brooklyn underneath a elevated train track. I mean, centered in every way. I mean, part of what I love about this photo is that- That's ridiculously centered. Yeah, it has actually nothing to do with the rule of thirds. For me, it was all about symmetry and lines and kind of leading the eye to the center of the image. We could talk about how there is like some segments yeah, in here yeah. with these poles. That goes back to my theory that like, you can make an argument from 90% of photos applying the rule of third. So this is my friend, Eric Conover. He's also a YouTuber. Shout out. The lines, shout out. So the lines of the rails, you know, lead back to Eric, but he's not centered on both accounts. He's centered east to west, but north mm -hmm. to south, he's off center. Right, right. So it does go back to like technically, right. does it? Like... So it's like a half and a half. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, which is a really good place to be in understanding when it is good to center people and then still add a really cool compositional element. So she is centering and using the rule of thirds, mm -hmm. which is like almost a double whammy. Yeah, um, you're so talented. Guys, <laughs> thank you. You've got 20 minutes to cut that out. <laughs> On the topic of single whammies, I have a photo that is just straight up dead center. Yeah. This is a photo of my friend doing a tray flip, and I used long exposures and flashes to have these dragged out lights from the city, and they're all pointing directly in at him. It's, it's all about emphasis, and having someone centered and lines pointing to them is really powerful in my opinion. All right, and on that note, let's go take some photos outside. Yeah. Woo! Sarah actually has some rule breaking in her apartment. Really? Break. Boom! This is the worst place in New York City ever. How many cameras do you have right now? I'm carrying three if you count the phone. Also, I build more on this stuff. Is she vlogging or is she taking a photo? We lost Sarah. How's the professional photographer doing? 
<laughs> and that was our shooting session. I'm actually in LA on a skate trip. But anyway, to go over our shots one more time, these are my three shots or two shots with two different edits. And for this shot of Tyler, I just used the eyes in the top two corners using the rule of thirds. And then of course the man on the left third of the photo. Then Tyler's shot just used the same exact thing. Woman on the left photo, empty Times Square, which is pretty cool. And Sarah used the rule of thirds very loosely, but with the three tiers of buildings, which I thought was awesome. And I think her shot actually turned out best. Now what I really wanted to say and stress here is the rule of thirds is just one piece in your photographic toolkit. You can't go out and say, I am gonna shoot the rule of thirds because it might not necessarily happen how you want it to. However, once you fully wrap your head around it, you're gonna be taking photos and you'll see, oh, this is a great opportunity for the rule of thirds. So don't force it, let it happen naturally, but when it does, it's gonna work out great and you're gonna have a beautifully composed photo. So huge thanks to Sarah and Tyler for helping me make this. They were awesome and it was super fun bouncing stuff off of them and getting different people's takes and perspectives. And huge thanks to you guys for watching this. Hopefully you learned something about photography from this video. Best of luck shooting. I'm super excited to see your photos using the rule of thirds. You can post them on Instagram using the hashtag Josh Katz photos so I can see all your shots. Anyway, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more photo content and that'll be very much appreciated. Also, comments are always fun to read and if you have any questions about the rule of thirds, I'd be happy to answer them and hopefully other photographers watching this video will also contribute to the discussion down below because a dialogue is also always a blast. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you eventually.